or when is the right time to trim so by you know, squeezing the rim. Okay? If the rim is stiff enough, okay, and then the surface, you know, while you're touching it, it's not sticky, but you still can make some indents, you know, with the finger nail, that's a good timing to trim, okay? So you pass, try to squeeze the rim, okay, feel it. <laughs> not too hard, though. <laughs> <laughs> I can pass that around and I can use this to do the uh, demonstration, alright? So, squeeze the rim and feel it, see if it's sticky, and then use it in the nail to make some indent, okay? Alright? So, it, and it's quite thick. I did the, the bottom thick. And now I'm going to trim it to a good size, okay? And uh, a good foot, too. And a lot of people is asking, you know, What's the right thickness? Uh, because the way I throw, I throw it up the hump. So when you are throwing the stuff up the hump, you don't compress against your wheel head or your bags. So it's always not compressing enough. Okay. Even you say I compress enough, but no, because the bottom is, is a chunk of clay. It's soft, so you don't. Okay. So my. Uh, my way of avoiding, avoiding, avoid the uh, S crack, okay? S crack. Usually, when you throw up the hump, you get S crack, okay? And my way of avoiding is trim it thin enough, okay? Mm -hmm. I would say about um, one eighth of an inch, okay? Wow. One eighth. Oh, I would say about two to three millimeters, okay? For the, the thickness, um, to avoid. The S crack, okay. yeah, and uh, I I got it very quite successful. Uh, if I trim it within that, ninety nine point nine percent I don't have a S crack. Okay, but if I leave like this untrimmed, I guarantee tomorrow when it dry, I will have S crack. Okay. What is the thickness of that now? Yes. So I'm going to show you how you measure the, the thickness now. And you're saying the bottom is one eighth inch thick. Is that what you're saying? One eighth. Yeah. The finished. The finished one. Finished. Okay, the finished one. Okay. So now, how can you tell the thickness of this one? Well, you can use the needle tool to poke it in, just like I did to 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 do it. But this one has been dry, and you don't want to make make a hole there, right? So I invent a measurement. Okay. It's very easy. You get a plastic ruler. I throw three holes right here, one in the center and one on the side. Okay. Each one on the side. And then I think we got a lots of a Chinese stove here, a restaurant, right? Have you seen this kind of chestic? Wrong one? Okay. So I get that and then I make marks, okay? The red one, the whole circle one, it's 50 millimeters, okay, 100, 150, 200. Um, each dark one is 10, and in the middle I put a red dot, it's 5, 5 millimeters, okay, 5 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is, first I measure from here to the top of the ruler, I use this as a measure, and then I measure the middle. So I subtract that, that's the thickness mm. of the bottom. Okay? It doesn't need to be, you say you are, you are uh, familiar with the uh, American system, like quarter inch, but you just forget about the millimeters, you just, like a unit, okay? This is 100 unit, this is 80 unit, so you subtract, so you have 20 units, okay? We don't say millimeters, okay? And it's easier that way because it's a smaller increment. Um, you, you get more precisely by using the millimeter system. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go. And by the way, this hole is quite fitting quite well. You don't want to be too too big, because too big then you you yeah. might when you measure you might tip over, so you don't get it accurate. It no needs to be straight, right? So get your hole just barely that you. 
chopstick can go through. Okay. So let's go here. This is hundred, right? The red one is hundred. Now is the dark one is ninety, right? So we are below eighty-five. Um, I would say around eighty. Eighty units. Okay. Um, here is the middle part. <coughs> so it's so one, two, three, four, five. It's 50, I would say 58. So 80 minus 58. 30. 22. <laughs> oh, sorry. 58. 22. 22, right? So it's about 22 millimeters. 22 <coughs> millimeters. This is 20, so it's about this thick. Where's my thumb? Is 22. So it's quite, quite thick. Okay. So I got lots of good trim out, but uh, at least I got an idea how this line is, okay? So it's 58, right, in the middle. We need to uh, remember, okay, we need, we need to remember. And now we want to try to center the piece. Uh, you could use the... Uh, I don't know how you center it. You use the needle tube to test it and center it, right? Okay. Does anybody know how to uh, tap center? You do? Okay. Okay. Good. Anyone else? I'm not good at it. I'm not good at it. Okay. <laughs> I use a machine. Use a machine to center? <laughs> you mean that? Uh, the different? Okay. What's the secret to the tap process? Uh, what's the secret to the tap center? Practice. Yeah, and it's kind of practice, but how you practice? And how you practice? Okay. You need to tap the up center, like here, I try to push it. Okay. This spot is up center, right? So when it comes to here, I'm using my left hand. You can use your right hand. So when it comes to here, you have to hit right on the money, right, to move it back, okay. But how can you tell that's right here? You need to practice, okay. But how you practice, this is how I will show you how. You get a stick here, okay, you spin the wheel, can you tell that one is close to the uh, stick? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, right there, right? So, then the wheels keep on spinning, right? So, so does, there's a distance from here to here. So does the distance from your hand to here. So you have to match the time, okay? So you have to match the time once it gets to here and then you tap right there. That's how you practice. So, you find your rhythm, okay? okay go. Once you, I would say that it's around uh, 11 o'clock, okay? You place your, your indicator at 11 o'clock. But of course you can put it here so that you have to count the distance, okay? If you, you, hand is, you have a slow hand, then you go 12 o'clock <laughs> and then hit it. Or you, you even slower, you, your hand is like, your indicator is on uh, 3 o'clock. So it, it depends on you, but you have to find a reason. And of course, the, uh, the wheel spinning speed also play the role, <laughs> right? You spin faster, then you have to move your hand first, right? Fast, fast. Tap, 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 right? Slow. Tap, 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 tap. That's how you practice, okay? But by now, I, 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 I could just use my finger to censor it, okay? <laughs> Even I can cross my eyes <laughs> with my finger to sense. Okay. So but that, that's finger, how you practice. The finger is your reference point. Yes, the finger is my reference. Close your eyes. Yeah, with my eyes crossed. It's on the, on the video. Wow. <laughs> I show off. Okay. <laughs>
Okay, so that's how you practice though. Okay, so depending on the speed and uh, the distance, you can put your indicator like 12 o'clock. My, I, I always tell people that you put it in, start with the 11 o'clock, see how it does. Okay, if you, you do too slow, then um, you adjust it. Okay. Good? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. So now, uh, my way of sticking the pot, usually I will just use a sponge in the water, the spot that I want to stick. And then after I tap center, push uh, the pot stick on the bed, right on the bed. But you want to use the metal, okay, the metal, not the wooden one, because the wooden will absorb the water. Um, it's harder for you, the pot to stick on it. So I like to use the, just plain bed to uh, uh, we'll have to stick my pot. Okay. If not, you could just use the coil. Put the coil. Okay. One, two, three, four should be enough. But one, when you are ready to uh, squeeze your coil, you want to hold down the pot. Otherwise, you spend spend a lot of effort. You push it. <laughs> you just push it away. So make sure you hold down the pot. Okay. Why? So I was talking about. To, uh, different kind of trimming tools. Okay. This is the longer one, and this is the shorter one. Usually, I use the shorter one to trim, just doing the trimming job. But for the longer one, to do the chattering, because the longer one is a little bit more bouncy. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to uh, just roughly cut the surface so that it's flat. And then I'm going to show you the uh, the chattering mark, so, so that I have my surface nice and smooth. And then when I get to the chattering, I'm going to use the longer blade. Okay. So when I'm holding the tool, okay, I'm holding the tool this angle, so when the wheel spin, it's going to start to kick back my tool, and that's how I get my chatter mark. And if I use just a corner of it, okay, right here, use this corner, I get different mark. If, if I use the whole blade, I, I get different mark, okay. First, I will show you this corner, okay. So I kind of tip over. And you want to spin your wheel quite fast. Are you holding the tool loosely? I'm okay. holding the tool not quite loosely. Okay, I have to hold it. So really cut it in two. But you can't see oh, it back. That's so weird. You can hear it. Yeah, you can hear it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is the tool. It's bouncy, so you see that if you come closer, you will see the tool is vibrating actually. Yeah. Okay, the tool is vibrating. Okay. So now let me remove the mark. So your chattering tool is different from your trimming tool? Uh, I could use this too, but uh, when you're using this, you want to use the corner. The major forces should be here to when you want to remove the clay. Otherwise, it's so bouncy, you will get a get chattering automatically. Okay. So I remove it. Now I'm going to use the whole blade. Okay. And I get a slanted mark here. So I get different mark, right, on this one. Okay, let me remove it again. Okay, uh, some people ask me, 
how you get the line that is called like fluting, okay? The fluting. Yeah, the fluting, okay. So I'm going to use this part. I was using, first I using this corner, right? Uh -huh. And then I used the hole. Then this time I'm going to hold my tool this way, okay? Um, you want to initiate the uh, vibration. So it's easier to get vibration when the tip get caught right there. So I'm going to get my tip to cut onto the foot here, okay? So this part is going to trigger the vibration, okay? So it's a straight line instead of a, a, a dot, just a straight line. No, no, no that's the, the whole end on the, on the side. Okay. And then we do it again. Right over here. I don't know if this is thick enough. And do a bit loosely and when it catches catch okay catch right here okay when it catch start to vibrate you have really have to get okay. so it's only uh, 30 seconds you get your your texture going. On this tool it's very easy to get that, that result. Even sometimes if you use the tool you don't like it, you just get it automatically. Oh, yeah. yes. mm -hmm. yes. When you see my ball there's a cutting line. That's how I use it the corner to define the line, this is the, the chatter and this is the plain power. Okay, so this is a different, this is a curve here, right? So I'm going to use this. So on the same part, you got so many different chatter marks. Okay. Let me define it together. I cut two lines. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. There's a edge there to uh, have two separate different texture. Okay. So that's the uh, check done. And when you are using this tool, make sure when you don't want to uh, chatter, you want to hold down the tool quite tight. So this is what I always do. Okay, with my hand holding on the side of the pot, with my thumb extended. So this thumb. That thumb is going to be like a support of my tool, okay? And I'm cutting it. This tool is a support. So I'm cut the width here, okay? And then the middle part, I don't need it. So I'm going to really use the corner of my tool there. Just go in and remove it.
this is when you have a great shock too, or you could do this easily and faster. So you are worried about cutting it through, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's the double measuring. So from the rim to the inside is 58. Because I uh, I already trimmed a little bit off. So this is not 80 anymore. It will be less than 80. So let's make sure double, make sure that. This is about, was about 89, right? now it's about 75. 75 minus 58. 17. 17, right? And I say I want to trim within 3 millimeters. So how deep I need to trim? 14. 14. Good. So, how was it? It's not quite 14 yet. I was about 12 to 13, right? So I have one millimeter to remove. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's more accurate to measure. Mm -hmm. You're making this too? You could make it. This is very easy. <laughs> if you don't know how, ask staff for commission. Yeah. <laughs> right? I think they are willing to uh, help you. Do you measure every... I want to dip it in, stop right there. And if you don't want your foot so tall, you always trim it down, right? With, with a very sharp knife, you will be able to do it easily. Right? And after I finish, I have my, you know, I don't have my stamp here. I just put my stamp right there. This is my stamp. Okay. And I, to save me time, I don't need to uh, hold the little ones. I don't need to sign my name. But the stamp. So the bigger ones, you, you write your name? Uh, the bigger one, I, they just, they just complain about it. <laughs> Fire, you can fire. Yeah. Yeah.